Welcome to Disciples Net Church. We are so glad you've joined us for worship. Feel free to join in with hymns, pray with us, and share in communion. Wherever and whenever you are joining us, God's Spirit and people from all over the world are here with you. So let's prepare our hearts for worship. There is a bomb in Gilead to make the wounded whole. Pastor Russ Smith, will you join me in prayer? Our Lord and our God, we look around us in our world and we see warring factions gathering. We see people who value gaining temporary power more than finding lasting solutions and who value defeating their opposition more than seeking common goals. Remind us of your love which crosses every boundary and vaults every barrier to seek out each and every one of your children, wherever they are. Help us to be signs of your grace, 
bringing life and hope and wholeness to all those we meet. Lord, we lift up those in need to you, seeing their faces in our minds as we pray for all those in danger and need, for the sick and the suffering, for the poor and the oppressed, for the hungry and the homeless, for those seeking refuge and a place to call home, for our neighbors and our families and our companions and all those we love, for our countries and our world, lifting our voices with all creation, offering ourselves to you, the living God, through Christ, source of all life, hear our prayers as we offer this day. Give help to all people in their weakness that they might approach you in faith. Even as our Lord taught us to approach you with the prayer that he gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us Pastor Carolyn, and our scripture today comes from the Gospel of Luke. If you'd like to read along, we're in chapter 17, verses 11 to 19. On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was going through the region between Samaria and Galilee. As he entered a village, ten lepers approached him. Keeping their distance, they called out, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were made clean. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. And he prostrated himself at the feet of Jesus 
and he thanked him. And he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus asked, Were not ten made clean? But the other nine, where are they? Was none of them found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, Get up, go on your way. Your faith has made you well. May God bless the hearing of our scripture on this day. Won't you pray with me? Oh God, now is the time. We ask that you speak, that our hearts be open, that we will receive a word from you, that we would apply it to our lives, even in this moment. Be with me now, for if you do not speak, I will have nothing to say. In Christ's holy name, amen. Today, our scripture was read and came from Luke chapter 17. And I want to talk to you from the question, what about you? So many times we read the scriptures and we hear the stories and we leave them in the Bible. And that's it. But what about you? How does this word today affect you? There was a time in life when I felt like I was all alone. I felt like no one understood me. I didn't fit in with the really good people and I wasn't bad enough to be with the bad people. And I just was out there on my own. I just didn't fit in anywhere. So like most people who don't fit in anywhere, I created my own place. I went and found a space for me to be accepted, for me to be loved and a part of the crowd. I found myself in what I like to call the Cave of Misfits, which simply is theater. I found myself acting, and in acting, I could be exactly who I was, or I could be someone totally different. And no matter who I was, I was accepted. Today, we have the story of people who I would like to say are in the cave of misfits. They didn't really fit in at home. They couldn't go somewhere else. So they found themselves together, Jews, Samaritans, probably others, with this one common denominator of leprosy. Now, if they were like me, which I'm not sure, but if they were like me, then they may have made some lifelong friends. They may have found some people who they really had more in common with than they thought. The barriers that had kept them from connecting with each other and being friends were now taken away. It didn't matter how old they were. It didn't matter how much they weighed. It didn't matter where they came from because now they were all together in this one area because those who did not have leprosy didn't want anything to do with them. They didn't touch them. They didn't talk to them. They just kind of left them out there to be on their own. The proximity effect had created new bonds. It had shown how people were more similar than different. It released some of the fears that existed because of the unknowns. In this text, we find Jesus in the middle of nowhere on his way to Jerusalem, passing through Galilee, through Samaria. He meets us in the place of hopelessness and despair where the world has written us off. Jesus is waiting to befriend us. Something in me says that Jesus may have been looking for them. Just a thought to give to you today. You see, in Luke 4.18, Jesus gives his call that says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. I wonder if they were oppressed 
brokenhearted, captives. Did Jesus not come for them? When we listen to Luke, one of the things that we can learn about Luke is that he was a man of community. He was a man where people belonged to other people. He wants us to know that we are all connected to somebody, even when we feel we have nobody. So what about you? The people with leprosy had lost so much during their plight, and Jesus had reconciled them back to their communities. Now, what does that mean to you? How does this fit in? In life, we have choices. And it's not often what we're told to do, but our response to what we are told to do or our response to the choices we are given. We can take A or we can take B. In 2 Kings chapter 5, we have the story of Naaman, who was a great commander in the king's army. He had leprosy. He was sent to the king of Israel who didn't know what to do with him and tore his clothes and just was all in uproar. But Elisha, the prophet, heard and sent for him. And Elisha told Naaman to dip in the river Jordan seven times. Now, Naaman looked at Elisha like, what? Surely not in the river Jordan. I'm trying to get clean and you want me to, there are other rivers. There are better rivers. There are cleaner waters to go in to be cleaned. Why would you have me go there? He was upset about it and he almost missed his healing because he didn't think that was good enough. But he was obedient and he went and he dipped and his skin was made like that of a child. He returned back with a grateful heart. Every time God speaks to us, whether it is directly or indirectly through another person, we ought to listen and be obedient. The Bible tells us that it is better to obey than to sacrifice. You see, God can do what we can't see. How many times have disobedience and fussing caused you to miss your blessing? So today I ask you, where do you need to obey the voice of God? Where do you need to trust what he has said to you with the simple command? What would your response be to the gift of life renewed? Would you be like the one who went back to say thank you? Would you be like the nine who kept going? A few chapters earlier, Jesus told the story of the lost sheep. He told us that the shepherd left the 99 who were safe and secure and went for the one who was lost and wandering. Here in our story, it was the one who went back to say thank you. Only one recognized it. God moves in the grateful. This one that came back was thankful. He fell down on his face at the feet of Jesus and gave thanks. His response was worship. His eyes were open and his heart was ready. So many times we go to God and ask for things without the faith to believe it can happen. So many times we miss the miracle we're praying for because we wanted it to come a different way. We are looking and listening for one thing and it comes in another this man that came back was a Samaritan amongst the Jews. Samaritans and Jews did not associate with each other. That was just not something they did. Yet this Samaritan was grateful and came back. It was in that moment that Jesus continued the healing. He didn't just clear his skin. He cleaned everything. In verse 19, Jesus says to him, arise. Go your way. Your faith has made you well. We have to learn to be grateful. We take so many things for granted thinking we are entitled to something. 
but Jesus didn't have to do it. He could have kept on his way, but as I supposed earlier, maybe Jesus was looking for them. Putting on a mind of gratitude will take you many places. It was the gratefulness that he showed that sealed his healing. He was healed from his main affliction, his noticeable trauma when he walked away. All the other things were cleared up for his faith and his thankfulness. Matthew 6, 33 says to seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Then all other things shall be added unto you. A promise this man received we too can receive. Life is going to present you with troubles. You are going to feel like you don't fit in. Jesus, the one who specializes in friending the friendless, will show up and change your situation. We have to learn to recognize when he shows up. You have been crying out, Jesus, Master, Have mercy on me. He has heard you and answered you. Will you be obedient to the command that has been spoken? Will you be thankful for the things God has done for you? What about you? Like the woman at the well, I was seeking. For things that could not satisfy And then I heard my Savior speaking Draw from my well that never shall run dry Fill my cup, Lord, I lift it up, Lord Come and quench the thirsting of my soul Friends, as we gather at this table once again, we've been reminded that even the smallest of things in the kingdom of God can grow to be very great. I'm thinking back to that night so long ago when Jesus shared the meal with his disciples and broke the bread and shared the cup. And although each one of them received only a small portion of the bread, the cup, Who would have thought that as they carried it out and then took this bread and cup and sharing it again and again, that it would extend to where you and I are today. This is the meal that we're invited to and we're invited to invite other people to. Now true, here on the internet, we can't actually pass you this bread and this cup as we'd like to. But we bless the bread and the cup that's before you, whether it's physical or held in your mind's eye. We especially like to remember those of our disciples and that family who may not be able to eat or drink at all. But you too are here at this table. And we bless what you hold in your mind's eye, that remembrance that we are all part of the body of Christ. We here at DisciplesNet even keep the sheep 
on our table as we worship, not as toys, but as reminders that the people that we can't see out there are the sheep of God's pasture. And each is so important, so valuable, and we want them never to be forgotten. All are included at the table, and we invite you now to come. Let us pray. O oh, gracious and loving God, we thank you so much for the invitation to come to the table time and again to remember that we are part of the body of Christ, that we are part of your family. And we come to be fed, and we come to remember what Christ taught us. We come to remember the sacrifice of Jesus. And so we ask now that you bless the bread, the cup, held before each one listening here. And help it as we take it into our minds and our spirits, physically and or mentally. Help us to remember that small portion of bread and cup, the part of the body of Christ that you ask us to take out into the world to make a difference. For it's in the name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. What was on that last night as Jesus was eating with his disciples that he took of the loaf of bread. And after he had blessed it, he broke it and said to them, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, after they had finished eating, he took the cup. and said, This cup is a new covenant of my blood poured out for you. Do this in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat of this bread and drink of this cup, you tell the Lord's story. Remember his death until he comes again. Won't you come now? The body of Christ broken for you. The cup of blessing poured out for you.
Never from your presence. We pray that you will speak to us and that we will hear you and be obedient to your word. That even in this right now moment, all of the things that we are seeking you for will be ours. Our healing, our hope, our love, our future. Be with us now and forevermore. In Christ's holy name we pray. Amen. Amen.